and for us to use for the chicken. All right, Chef Tom and Chef Steve, I'm getting ready to admit the waiting room. Sounds good. All right, here they go. And then I'll do the welcome and we'll start at 1.30 to be exact. Admitting now. Hello, everyone. So good to see you all. We are happy that you guys are here. We're excited about today's episode. It is in celebration of Juneteenth. Just so you know, Juneteenth will actually um, be celebrated and it is now a holiday, which we have decided to honor here at Hack, um, but also across the globe. So June 19th is actually the celebration day for Juneteenth, but because we will be closed, Hack wanted to make sure that we brought it to you and we were able to celebrate. Just for those of you who may not be familiar with Juneteenth, it really is a celebration and a declaration of emancipation of enslaved African Americans. And so many call this a freedom day, a freedom holiday. So I'm so excited that my colleagues, Chef Tom and Chef Steve, whenever called upon to participate in Heritage Month or in celebrations, they have no problem. And because they are so skillful and so talented, they can adjust, pivot, and make whatever it is um, to go with what we're celebrating. And so you are home today, right? They are gonna take us back to a good old fashioned barbecue. And when you think about a barbecue, you think about a cookout, you think about being home with your family. So welcome home family, we are excited to invite you into the kitchen um, and you are in for a good old barbecue treat. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to the two amazing chefs by way of Chef Tom and Chef Steve. But again, family, welcome home in honor of Juneteenth. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Live from the Chef's Apprentice. Good to see you, Chef Steve. Good to see you too, Chef Tom. So today we're going to be talking about a Juneteenth barbecue. So the menu's we're doing five recipes today and all five recipes we actually featured for two events here on campus we did for the culinary advising committee and we also did for the board of trustees so um it was a big hit everybody loved what we did it were unusual items some of the recipes we created ourselves some of the recipes we searched and found on the internet to get ideas so um the first recipe we're going to do today is the only protein we're doing as, or as far as meat protein is a sweet tea brine chick, boneless chicken thigh. And I'm gonna talk about how we do the brining process. And then we made a peach whiskey barbecue sauce. So one and one goes together. So the brining process is uh, to make the tea, you're gonna make tea just like you would steep regular tea. So if you had three tea bags, Bring three cups of water to a boil, let it cool down, and we're going to add our spices. So our spices are garlic, yeah, salt, sugar, lemon juice, crushed red pepper. You need to have a little bit of sugar, and you need to have a fair amount of salt, because the idea of what you want to do when you brine is you want to infuse flavor into the, to the muscle. So that's what we're doing. So the brining process takes about 24 hours. A lot of people do it with turkey for Thanksgiving, uh, where they will brine it to try to keep it juicy. So chicken thighs are normally kind of juicy, but this is a nice twist on uh, Southern style. So Chef Steve here is pulling out the chicken thighs. I mean, what we want to do is we want to blot them dry a little bit, because we're going to put a rub on them. So in the rub, which is what we have here, and this recipe actually um, was featured in our ACF newsletter for the month of June. And, and I came up with this recipe um, just for this event and just for our newsletter. The rub is, usually has some type of brown sugar, some type of sugar, and it has to have a little bit of caramelization, salt, other kind of spices. Brown sugar, smoked paprika, chipotle chili powder, granulated garlic, granulated onion powder. You notice they're all kind of granulated, nothing, nothing wet. This is kind of a dry rub. Brown black pepper and a little bit of cayenne. So three or four different types of pepper. So what Chef Steve's doing here 
is he's taking them out of the brine and he's blotting them dry. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to take our rub and we want to season it. Okay? And then Chef Steve's going to go back and uh, grill them off. He's going to mark them and then we're going to finish them in the oven. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of our rub on. Chef Steve's going to spray them down. All right, before we grill them. Now, I don't know how everybody feels about chicken thighs. I like, to me, a, a good chicken sandwich. I like a chicken thigh better than I like a chicken breast because mm -hmm. it's a little juicier. And it costs less money, too. Uh, so, you know, being the economical father figure in my family. By the way, you know what else Sunday is, too? It's Father's Day. That's right. It's not, it's not just Juneteenth. It's a dual holiday. So it's Father's Day. So this actually works out really well because we have the Juneteenth barbecue theme, and then we also have grilling, which people love to do, dads like to do on Father's Day. Thank you, Chef. So Chef Steve's going to take those back there and mark those. And in the meantime, I'm going to start on my sauce. So my sauce consists of Tomato sauce. Now you could use ketchup if you wanted to use ketchup. This is actually just an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. It's actually this size right here. All right, it's not very big. We're gonna start off with that. Now if you use ketchup, the thing about ketchup is ketchup has vinegar and sugar in it. So you have to adjust what you're working with. Now we're gonna add some vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I'm going to add some brown sugar. So essentially, I'm kind of making my own ketchup in a sense. All right. I also have here a little bit of honey. It's a little more sweetening ingredient. So I want kind of a, a sweet flavored barbecue sauce, a little bit of fruit background. I have here some Worcestershire sauce. I have here peach preserves. So you can get these in the grocery store. Uh, there's uh, high-end brands, and then there's like the, the budget store brands, like White Store, the giant brand. Either one works fine. If it's a little chunky, that's kind of good. I have here two tablespoons of my rub I'm going to put in there. That's going to be my seasoning. And then our secret ingredient is peach flavored whiskey. Now you could use there's, uh, peach, is a, peach whiskey has become very, very popular. There's crown peach on the market. Um, if you don't have that and you don't want to use that, if you want to use peach brandy, that's fine. Um, if you want to use peach schnapps, you can get away with that too. So I'm going to mix that in there. I'm going to bring it to a boil and I'm going to let it simmer. Now, one of the things about grilling, one of, uh, I've seen people make the mistake over the years where they'll put their meat, barbecue, so in their raw meat. And then they're going to grill it. The barbecue sauce has a lot of sugar in it, that kind of stuff. The sauce should really go on at the end. All right, you don't want to burn your sauce. You can caramelize it a little bit, but you don't want to burn it. So this sauce, we're going to let it actually cook, and I'm going to show you what a finished product looks here in a second. This is actually going to cook down, so we call it reducing. It's going to cook down by about 50% until it gets kind of syrupy. And you can do this the day before doesn't have to be hot when you put it on. You can put it on room temperature, cold, whatever. So you're going to put it on your, your protein when it's almost done. And you're going to glaze it, and that sets the sauce. Chef Tom, question for you. Do you add sugar to your barbecue sauce? Brown yeah, I, just sugar. Added, I just added brown sugar. OK, how many spoons, though? How many spoonfuls? Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, Half a cup of dark brown sugar. Half a cup. And yep. you do brown sugar versus white sugar because? Because it has a little bit of molasses in it. That's what brown sugar is. It has a little bit of molasses in it. 
just adds a little more extra flavor. Kind of a little smoky flavor. Question, what is your go-to barbecue sauce? Oh, Sweet Baby Ray's. Okay, always? Uh, no, not always. My favorite, and I actually won a recipe contest with it like 30 years ago, was Open Pit. And Open Pit is still, is hard to find. Carnes carries it. But my wing recipe that I used, the one that's in our cookbook, all right, when I first developed it, I made it with open pit. It's a little more tart. It has a little bit of a different tint. It's not as dark. It's a little more uh, pinkish, I want to say, but it's good. All right, we're going to fire those in the yep, oven. Yep, I didn't know if we to show yep. So this yep. is what Chef Steve's grill marks look like. You can get a look at that, guys. Where are we at? There we go. Okay. So he's got some nice hatch marks on the chicken. So he, he started off when he put it on the grill. You always put your presentation side down first on the grill to get your marks. And then you flip it over and you finish it on the other side. So that way when we mark this off and finish it in the oven, we'll be able to see that our sauce is here cooking. So these are gonna take about 15 minutes, 15, 16 minutes in the oven. If you didn't wanna heat up your oven, you could do it all the way on the grill, okay? And you just have to, uh, do it at a little lower temperature. You don't want to burn your, you don't want to do it too much of a high heat. So if you like, I don't know, what's the, I, Cindy, here's a good question for you. What's the preference of cooking, charcoal or gas? All right. I know at my house, I don't have a gas grill. I have a charcoal grill. I love working off a charcoal grill. It just adds a unique flavor to it. Yes, you got to plan a little bit. Yes, you got to it's hard to do it in the rain, that kind of stuff. But that's what I like. I think gas is a little more convenient. So uh, for those of you who are on the line, drop in the chat, what do you prefer, gas or charcoal? I can speak for me, Chef Tom, I'm with you. There's something about that charcoal taste that actually gives it that good old grilled flavor. So I'm all about a good old fashioned charcoal grill. Um, my husband is not a fan of it because of the smoke and, and sometimes the cleanup of a thing, but taste wise, I'm a charcoal girl all day long. Um, so for those of you who are on with us, drop in the chat, what do you prefer, charcoal or gas? Let's take a survey. Okay. All righty. Okay, I'm going to take my sauce. I'm going to take it on the back range. Chef Steve's going to show you one of the salads that we did for the uh, our special menu. This was a big hit, as, as all three of the salads we're doing mm -hmm. today. Were, we had recipes requested, but they were all a big hit. So. All right, all Chef right. Steve, you're on. All right. Thank you, Chef Tom. So, as well with any barbecue theme, a lot of people love corn. I love corn personally. Chef Tom, do you love corn? I do love corn. It's one of my um, favorites. I love it because it's so versatile. You can do so much with it yep. and so and so many different varieties. So what I did this morning is I roasted this corn. I just took a bag of corn and roasted it in some some oil. You can if you had a whole corn in the cob, you could you could parboil or parboil it and then you could roast it on the uh, on on the Parboiler grill, like Chef Tom said, or um, even a gas grill, and it'll get that nice char on it. So I kind of did did this, but I did it in the oven. Um, if you don't, also for this recipe, you don't absolutely need to uh, roast it either. You could just keep it, you could thaw it out and just keep it nice and bright and yellow. But I like a little bit of crunch to it, so it added a nice little texture to it. I have some cherry tomatoes here that I just cut in half. Add some nice, nice fresh See how famous freshness to the salad. I have some, some Brunoise or finely chopped red onion. So I while some, Chef Steve is getting um, his condiment and stuff together, the, the consensus is that everybody um, 
likes for the most part charcoal, but they like the ease of gas for cleaning. So they like the charcoal taste, but the convenience of the cleaning of gas. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. All right. So I also have some feta cheese here. Feta is very salty, so you won't need to add much um, of a salt, any more salt to your, to your mixture this morning. Whenever I roasted my corn, I mixed it with olive oil, salt, and pepper, but I just did it lightly. I didn't go too heavy. Also have some fresh basil here that we're gonna use, use in a minute. I have a little bit of oil here that I'm just gonna drizzle over top of it. Going to mix in some lime juice, adds a nice bright acidity to it. What I'm going to do before I add my basil is I want to mix this up. So this is a, something that you could do for a barbecue the day ahead of time. And then you want to wait to add your basil because if you add it too, too soon, it's going to wilt. And that, all that lime juice is just going to turn your, your uh, nice bright basil brown and, it, and it, won't, it won't be very appealing to the eye or to the dish in general. So I mixed it all together. The oil with the feta and the lime juice kind of um, clumped together a little bit. So I have a little bit more oil here. I'm just going to add a little, touch more just to loosen it up. You can also add more lime juice to loosen it up as well. Yeah. I wish yep. you all could see the chat. Um, it's hilarious. So Matt's um, wife has banned him from the grill. So he said he's not weighing in. Uh, Morgan has a pellet grill. Um, okay. And then Mike is requesting that we email the berry salad. So if we can make sure that we get that recipe um, to be sent out, that would be great. But the chat is hilarious. Absolutely, we could do that. So one thing I'm gonna do now is add the basil in because we're getting ready to, to present this. So it'll be nice and bright. And it adds another, just one of those, adds another freshness to the overall salad. A lot of the recipes we're doing today has a lot of, have a lot of fresh elements that are, that are key to, to summer and grilling in general. All right. All right, as I finish this up, Chef Tom's gonna get ready for the next one. Alrighty. Thank you very much. Looks good. I know what I'm eating after this is over. Agreed. All right, Chef Steve, the barbecue sauce is almost ready. Okay, I'll keep an eye on that. I have the thermometer down by the oven to check the chicken thighs. All right. I also brought out a pastry dish. Thank you, sir. Before we go any farther, I just want to kind of uh, talk just a little bit about our restaurant. I know you, many of you are familiar with the Chef's Apprentice, but um, we got a lot of credit for our show. People like our show, and we love that. But we have a lot of people behind the scenes that make our show successful. We have one, two, three, four, five, six IT people here right now, you know, kind of helping us out and making sure that they get all the camera angles. Our staff at the restaurant, Karen Klein is behind me. Hi, Karen. She's, she's back there. She's back cleaning up our, because we closed at uh, a little after one o'clock today to try to get ready for the show. So all this happens because we have a great staff with a lot of great people. Uh, Debbie Pritchard is a new in our catering position. Uh, she's back getting ready for an event. Vegas Nichols is one of our student workers. The casuals and he's helping put things together and uh, but I just want to take a minute and say thank you to those people because we don't do it by ourselves so. all right so the next recipe we're going to do is a is a watermelon berry salad 
Um, it's a very simple salad, easy to do. And most of these salad recipes are not complicated. In fact, most of these recipes that we've done today, we pick because they're not because they're easy. Uh, we picked them because we liked them and we created them. But we when, to pick them to do for the show, we picked recipes that are easy. And I think you're going to like these because they're easy to put together. A little bit of prep involved, but not a lot. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I have a half of a seedless watermelon here. And I'm just going to, I know I showed this for Cinco de Mayo Day, so I'm going to show it again, just in case you didn't get to see Cinco de Mayo show. But an easy way to clean a watermelon. A lot of people want to cut it into wedges and then do each wedge. And, uh, and that's fine. In the food service business, we don't have a whole lot of time. So for us, it's more uh, efficiency. I'm just going to take a kind of a thin bladed knife, curve it around, and take the rind off. I'm not saving my rind to pickle it, but I know people that do that. Okay, and then I'm just going to lightly want to make sure I get. The white part off, which is the rind. Take as little of the flesh off so I have a good yield. Chef Tom, there's a question for you. Clearly, uh, clearly you've been doing this a long time, and so you cutting the watermelon appears to be easy. Is there a method to the madness? Is it the quality of knife that you're using, or what is the best way to do it because you did that without ease? Yeah, you, well, you are correct on all those things that you said. Um, so yes, one key is a sharp knife. Another key, if you noticed, I, I blocked off the end so I could stand it on end so it doesn't roll. So if I was going to do this with a whole watermelon, I do the same thing. I cut off each end, right? So it stands so you don't want it rolling around and wobbling. And then kind of sharp knife. And this is a thinner blade. This is actually a Santuco. Um, and this, this knife actually comes from the restaurant store. It's about $19. It's not expensive. A lot of people think the most expensive are, are the best. And this is actually one of my favorite knives, and it's a $19. I have two or three in my house. In case I would lose one, and I would have a backup. But we use it in my house for everything because it holds its edge. Uh, but that's the key. And just kind of circling down, right, just knowing where you're, yes, any of these skills you do, the more you do it, uh, you become more efficient. That's a good question. So once I have it flat, what I'm going to do, and if you've ever seen a chef cut an onion, right, they'll cut horizontally. So I'm going to cut horizontally. And you notice I'm just doing little back and forth saw motions. All right. And I want to turn my, turn my board. And then this is another trick is do a drag. Don't chop. Do a drag. In other words, put the point of your knife down, drag. Just like that. It's called a drag cut. All right, and that keeps everything in line. If you do this, if you have children in your house, if you take a half a seedless motor mountain and prep it and put it in a bowl, it'll be gone in minutes. All right, so real easy. Just like that, you see what kind of yield you get out of just a half of a melon. All right. So the next couple of ingredients to go in here. So there's three different types of berries. And one of the things that I did when I did research on uh, the Juneteenth barbecue recipes is there, there always should be one or two red recipes if you're going to do a, bar, a, a Juneteenth barbecue buffet. You need to have some type of red food because it represents the bloodshed that went on before our brothers and sisters were emancipated. So I found that very interesting, and, and I, yes, I agree with it. So these are blackberries. Make sure you wash them. Very simple. Toss them in there. Plant of blueberries, and these things right now are three for ten dollars at the grocery store. I'm gonna make sure you look through for no stems. Have some water or some strawberries here. I'm just gonna cap them. Right, these were washed. You can quarter them. You can third them. 
Um, if you can get homegrown, and right now you can, that's what you want to get. These are Driscoll's, which is what they sell in the grocery store. They look beautiful. They don't taste as good. They're not as sweet. Okay. But unfortunately, we, we eat with our eye, and uh, we assume because they're unblemished uh, that they're, they taste great, and they don't always. So we're going to put some of that in there. Just to get it started, I'm going to cut one more. As you can see, this is you could do this prep, right, the morning of your event very easily. So the last couple things we got to do is I'm going to chop a little bit of um fresh mint okay this is fresh mint that i got i took it off the stem so all i have here is the leaves and i'm just gonna chop that lightly any kind of fresh herb the more you chop it the finer the more flavor gets released all right now chef tom this is a question that i'm asking can you talk to me about the process of your hand with the knife, your your hand never really left, so to speak. So talk to us about that process of how you're cutting the So grain. if I was going to slice an onion, my knife would stay right on my knuckles. Okay, that's my thickness measuring. Okay. okay how, I, how I, as I go across from one end to the other. So as I'm cutting, it stays right there. I don't put my fingers out. I don't bend it in. I keep it right in that middle knuckle right there. So for herbs, right, I'm keeping my thumb back and I'm just constantly pushing that in there, almost like mulching. Mm. Now, if I had a lot to do, I would get two of these. If I had like a pound of this to do for a large event, I would get two of these and put them together and hold them together and, and all together. And that chops them really fast. All right, so fresh mint, very aromatic. All right. We'll mix that in there. Our last garnish before our dressing is some lime zest. This is a microplaner. Okay. So you just kind of rub your, your lime. All it's going to do is pull the zest off. And you can save your lime but you're going to need some juice. So you don't have to just buy a lime, zest it, and throw it away. You're going to need some juice. I already have the uh, lime juice for my dressing. But this is another aromatic citrus rind, right? It's uh, very strong. All right, very simple. And then tap your microplane when you're done because what stuff gets kind of stuck on the inside. So my dressing here, I'm just going to give it to you. There's no salt and pepper in this. All right. It's fruit. So I think that's our chicken. Um, so this is two parts honey and lime juice. All right. So I think this is like a quarter cup of lime juice, a quarter cup of honey, and then two tablespoons of oil. So I made a bigger recipe because I have a bigger bowl. But as you can see that it's separated, so we're just going to kind of blend that back together. I'm going to add this as much as I need it, so it makes a temporary emulsion. So but that's the dressing. It's very simple. All right, and this, my, my recommendation here is to get this tossed. I'm actually going to place it in the bowl, and I'm going to pour my dressing over top of it. All right, fruit's very delicate. So I don't want to overmix it, and I'm going to dress it right in the bowl. And again, this is something that you can, I would not dress this the morning of the event. I would dress this right before your, your customers come. So you're just going to pour it right over top. All right, and it's just enough that it coats it. We had very, very good reviews. Oh, they looks good. I know what I'm eating for lunch. So, so there's the berry salad. Very fresh. Yes. Sorry. 
Um, please don't rub it in for those of us who are not there, but there is a question in the chat. <laughs> Cause you're like, I'm eating this and out the rest of us are sitting here looking. I'm trying to help you picture what it looks like and tastes like. Uh, so the question in the chat is what kind of oil are you using for the dressing? So I'm basically, I'm using a canola oil. I would not use an olive oil for that because olive oil is a little strong, has a little stronger taste. Canola is very neutral. Okay. So that works. There's also a blended oil out there that we use at the Chef's Apprentice a lot, which is a 10% olive oil blend. Okay. And then, so, oops. <laughs> there we go. Lost my bristles. So I'm going to paint, yeah, about to finish, finish the question. But that's what we use. I like to use a canola blend or a straight canola oil. Vegetable oil almost has no flavor. So, so I'm painting my chicken thighs here. Chef, can you stop my phone? Sure can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you all for the questions. They're good. Keep them coming. I'm painting my chicken thighs. Now, one of the things you notice, you're going to take a picture of this. They're not all the same size. That's kind of what you get at the grocery store. So they're all different size. So you want to make sure that you temp them. All right. Oops. That you temp them. Uh, temp the largest one to make sure that that's, that'll probably be the last one done. You may have to, if they're inconsistent in size like this, you may have to pull the smaller ones off the tray or off the grill and then finish the larger ones. So you don't want to tempt a large one and say, oh, the rest of them are done because they might be. All right, so what I want to do is paint my sauce on there. And we're going to fire this back in the oven for a minute. And I'm going to plate it and we'll present it. All right. While he works on that, we're going to move on to our next recipe. We're going to make a black eyed pea salad with a hot sauce vinaigrette. This was another huge hit that we actually, we, this is something that we came up with, but we also made it for um, the boardroom as well. Whenever they had their board meeting earlier this month. So I'm gonna start by making my dressing first. All right. So I'm gonna throw in my hot sauce. Apple cider vinegar. My garlic. Salt and pepper. Regular yellow mustard. And our honey, and we're gonna mix that together first before we create our emul an emulsification with our oil. This just incorporates all of those together before you add your oil. It's always good to mix your other ingredients before adding your oil anyways. Because like I said, that oil creates that emulsification that brings it all together for you. And one of the keys by doing an emulsification in a bowl, you can do it in a food processor by pouring the oil in slowly. You can also do it in a blender as well by the same thing, pouring it in slowly. But one of the keys by mixing it with a bowl is you want to make sure you get a wet towel. And what you do is you create like a little circle with your towel that your bowl kind of cradles in so that it doesn't move around on you as you're pouring in your oil. All right, let's start mixing this in. And you do the same thing like you would do it in a 
food processor or a blender, you just pour it in slowly. And then just do it enough that it brings it all together. It makes it a little thick, but it's still loose at the same time. All right, we're gonna set that temporarily off to the side so I can show you the contents of our salad. So these are two cans of rinsed and drained black-eyed peas. Did that this morning. How's our chicken there, Chef? Chicken is finished, it's ready. I'm gonna bring it up and showcase it here. All right. So it came out right great. In. So um, nice, easy presentation. I don't know if we can get an overhead shot of that. All right, there we go. Ah, ooh, ah. There you go. So Look at that. that. Can't have any. We're saving some for Cindy. Okay. Okay. All righty. All right. Yep. It looks amazing. It does. It smells delicious. All right. And then uh, as well in our salad, we have some cucumbers that I diced up, like a half inch dice. Got some more cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes that I just halved. Some chopped onion, fine. Finally chopped. And at this rate is when I'm gonna add in my dressing. Now when you do this, you could add it in a little bit at a time. The reason being is you don't wanna add it all because you just wanna coat your salad. You don't, want it, you, don't, you don't want it swimming. It's gonna give it a yellow sheen. That's just because that's just the, uh, the nature of the dressing. All right, have a, some nice, bright and vibrant colors, just like our last salad we created. I'm gonna throw in the rest of the dressing because it looks like it needs it. All right. As you can see, it coats it, but it's not swimming. And then I'm gonna add in some dill, some fresh dill just incorporate that in as well. Brings another freshness to the plate. All right. Move this out of the way. So Steve, a question. So your portions yes. were already um chopped up and already ready to go but what um amount of people can that salad feed roughly? so so the i i multiplied the recipe times two and it usually it i think it fed six i believe is what the recipe originally called for so this would feed about 12 people roughly 10 to 12. All right, set that here. We're actually gonna do. You gonna do the flip? Yep. All we'll right, flip that, that works. We're do this, and then we'll do the dessert. So, chef, what goes well with the barbecue? Well, for dessert, I don't know. I like those things called s'mores. Ah, they're delicious, aren't I they? I know, but you know they're kind of messy. They can be. Right. So this is actually a recipe that's called indoor s'mores. It's not our recipe. It's a kind of a classical recipe. Uh, great at summer camps, that type of stuff. So I'm going to show you how to put this together. Um, we also serve this for the Board of Trustees, and rumor has it that Dr. Ski was crushing on him. That's that's just what I heard, because <laughs> um, I don't ever see Dr. Ski eating a lot of sweet stuff, so they must be pretty good. So we're going to start off with butter. 
This is about a half a stick of butter. So originally you want five, six cups of marshmallows. We're actually going to put five in our mixture. And then it says two cups of chocolate chips, sir. It is, I believe, two cups, yes. Two cups of... Or a cup and a half. Cup and a half. Cup and a half. See? I didn't miss this recipe. So, and we're going to warm that up and get it melted. Just like you would do uh, your Rice Krispie treats. Kind of the same. So we're going to do it over... You don't want high heat, you kind of want low heat. Get our butter melted. And our other ingredient that goes in here is a quarter cup of light corn syrup. It actually helps make it a little more fluid. We're just going to melt this over low heat. And then our last ingredient, once our sauce is ready, we're going to add a, tea, a tablespoon of vanilla. So this doesn't take long to, to come together. If you did not want to, stand here and stir this. Say, oh, i got to stand here and watch it. Could I put this in the oven? You could. Absolutely, you, you could. could. Yep, I learned that could. when I was the chef at Franklin & Marshall, uh, we, you know, we fed like 900 people for dinner, and uh, Rice Krispie treats were a big thing. So my baker down there, she didn't make Rice Krispie treats on the stove. She put everything in a bowl and threw it in a deck oven and melted it all together, and then came out and mixed it and made sheet trays of it. And I said, ah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, so you learn from a lot of people on this journey. So we want to get this warm enough that the marshmallows dissolve. And then we'll add our vanilla. Yes. This one right here. Got it. Right here. That camera. That's the hidden camera that I never know. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So it's not quite melted yet. This takes just a little bit of time. So, but like I said, if you wanted to, you could put this in a, like a 275 degree oven, all right, and get it started, and then bring it out and finish it. Basically, we got to get the chocolate melted, the butter melted, and the marshmallows to break down to be not marshmallows anymore. Now, Chef, with doing that in the oven, you, is there less likely for you to scorch it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Because right. think about it, if you're doing it for a large group of people, correct? you got to stand and stir, or you need a steam jacket kettle, or this is something that you can actually do. Um, like I said, my baker showed me that. She was excellent. All right, so that's rolling. And then this, this is uh, one cup of the marshmallows reserved. So also the other ingredient with this is golden graham cereal, okay, which is we're going to mix together. So s'mores are marshmallows, chocolate, graham crackers. So these are golden graham. So this is the retro recipe. Not sure what that means. It says made with real honey. I'm not sure what they were doing after that <laughs> or before that. Kind of makes you think, right? So you don't want to walk away. This is once it starts to melt, it's going to come together pretty quick. So if it starts to stick a little bit, you don't want to scorch it. The sugar will burn fast. Just got to make sure that you stir it. There are some s'mores fan in the chat. They said they've been patiently waiting for this very moment. They saw the cracker. Um, the golden grams in the back, and they were just wondering at what point you was going to whip it out. So they are excited for this very <laughs> moment. Meanwhile, I want the chicken. <laughs> different strokes for different folks. Chicken is delicious. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put this together. All right. So it's not going to take long. But Chef Steve actually is, we have a finished tray. So Chef Steve is going to cut some. You want to get the mm -hmm. whiteboard and then I cut some and then plate it up here. We have a display plate. We'll show you how nice it cuts. One of the things that we learned when we did this is that um, if you're going to use it the next day, this is basically room temperature ready. Just like, like you don't put Rice Krispies in the refrigerator. Right? You let them sit out on the counter. And this is the same type of product. You're going to let it sit out on the counter. Uh, because it's it's chewable if you put it in a refrigerator it gets a little too hard right it, it adds humidity to the recipe you don't want to do that 
Okay, we're almost there. I'm going to actually turn it off because I think there's enough heat to melt what's in there. So I'm going to add my vanilla now. Okay. Chef Tom and Chef Steve, this is a question for you both. Do you guys wash your vegetables or fruits with soap or do you just use plain water? Use plain water. Plain water. So you never use any kind of soap on any of the fruits and vegetables? Not normally, no. no. They did have a produce wash. Uh, it just gets, um, unless you have something set up that dispenses it automatically, that it comes out of consistency. When I worked for a management company, we had a produce wash where we washed all our vegetables. And something how it got set, screwed up in the settings in one of our accounts, and people got sick off of it. So we went back to washing them in just cold, in regular cold water. So, okay, my chocolate's melted. I'm going to add it to my, my grams here. Just so you know, I was coached by Diane on this. <laughs> so I got to give her some props. So we're going to stir that up. Make sure it's all coated. Make sure all that's coated, Chef. Or do. All right. Chefs, we have a question. How much cereal? Eight cups. Eight cups? Yep, this recipe calls for eight cups. All right, Miss Bright, eight cups. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. It's good to have you with us today. And please come back again. Okay, and once Chef Steve gets that coated up, now we're going to add our garnish, which is basically marshmallows. Okay. I'm going to say we're there. Mm -hmm. And he's going to mix that up. And then what I have here is a, uh, it's, it's called a half pan, but it's a half tray. And I have a piece of butter. I'm just going to grease my pan with a little bit of butter before we put our mixture in there, press it down. It helps, to, helps to keep it from sticking. You do the same thing with Rice Krispies if you're making Rice Krispies, same theory. All right. Hi. There is another question in the chat. Do you, um, do you all use or do you soak, excuse me, do you soak or use running water to wash your fruits and vegetables? Sometimes um, I know that people tend to soak their vegetables. So the question is, what's the right way? Is it better to soak them for a little bit or just use running water? Running water. So um, we wash like our tomatoes, our melons, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I use, it's more, I always do it because of the outside of the rinds, but running water. I don't soak them. Now, if we're doing like cutting uh, romaine for Caesar salads, we will cut that and soak it in like a bus tub. Mm. All right. And then spin it. Because, and even the lettuce that you get from the grocery store that they say is washed, I wash it. Because that doesn't, that's what they tell you, but that doesn't mean that's always what happens. You can still find a little salad bug in one of the pre cut salads. So that's, that's it, that's very simple. Okay, so this would set up in a couple hours, right, once it sets up. So we have a finished product here, which is Miss Diana made for us. Make sure that we showed, showed it the right way. All we're going to do is uh, pop this out and we're going to cut some and display them. Should pop out of there almost like a Rice Krispie. Similar action. You see, it should hold together. Look at that, Ooh, baby. 
Good job, Diana. Now these are sweet and delicious, so you don't need to cut them into big pieces. I always say if you're cut a little smaller, somebody says, I had two, and they don't feel so bad. <laughs> so I'm going to do like a one and a half inch square. See, that's trust. Steve knows I'm not going to cut them. There we go. Mm -hmm. So if it's made correctly, where are we at? <laughs> you should see some of the marshmallows on the inside, right? Some of the layers. That's your garnish. Right? You should be able to see some of that as you cut it, so it's very identifiable. Room temperature stores really well at room temperature. You can make it the day before. You might want to hide it from the kids. And Dr. <laughs> Ski if he's coming to your house. So. All righty. There we go. There's a great five recipes for this upcoming Juneteenth barbecue celebration. I want to thank everybody. Thank the IT. Thank Chef Steve. Thank my staff here thank at you. the Chef's Apprentice. Pardon me? Cookbook. Plug the cookbook. Plug the cookbook. Plug the cookbook. So yes, the cookbook, um, we are down to uh, a few additions left before we do a reprint. So there's, uh, if you need them for a good Father's Day gift, there's uh, 80 recipes in there because there's Chef Tom's wings in there, Chef Steve's chili, Diana's snickerdoodle recipe, all right, chocolate chips, yeah, all those things are in there. They're $19.95 at the bookstore. You can order it online. Or if you're on campus and you're going there to get a discount on clothing, right, because they have a sale right now, Kyle is going to be so proud of me. Uh, thirty percent <laughs> off, right? And while you're there, you can buy a cookbook. So, um, and then uh, now we can order one. So, but thank you very much. Um, good job. This is food we're very proud of, uh, and we're proud to be part of what we're doing here today. Anybody have any more questions? Nope. The chat looks good. So thank Alrighty. you all. We will see you guys back. And please keep a lookout for Welcome Week, um, end of August into September. The chefs will be doing a few different arrangements, um, but especially they'll do a Power Week for breakfast for the students, especially as we know that students need to get to school. They're trying to get on time. A lot of them are parents. They got meetings to attend as well as class. So we'll have um, one episode at some point during Welcome Back Week where Chef Tom and Chef Steve will just show us how to do breakfast, um, maybe something in under 10 minutes, um, whether it's a light parfait or some muffins. And so still being discovered and worked on, but just stay tuned for that. If you need to get a quick breakfast that's healthy and to do it quickly, um, look, keep an eye out for that. That'll take place during Welcome Back Week. So more to come. Stay tuned. Thank you all again for being here with us time and time again. We appreciate your support. Thank you, Chef Tom, Chef Steve. IT department. We appreciate everybody. Until next time, live from Chef Apprentice. Bye, everyone. All right.